Hello. Before we begin, I would like to share just a few announcements with you. First of all, tomorrow evening we will be having our Good Friday service. We invite you to join on whatever platform you are watching this on to be a part of that worship service. Secondly, you'll notice the cross behind me is one where many years we have decorated with flowers from your garden. And we're going to be doing that again this year, a little bit differently. Um, we have one family that has volunteered to come down on Saturday and do the decorating by themselves. Uh, but we'd love to have your flowers. If you're able to leave your home, uh, we're going to have a system set up that you can come and drop off flowers with no contact. That's between 8.30 and 9 on Saturday only. And then it'll also be up here all Sunday, all Easter Sunday, even though we won't be here. Our neighbors who are driving by will be able to see their promise of the risen Christ. If you want to come and take a picture with your family, please do so. But, and this is important, please, 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 please do not come if you are one of the vulnerable populations of people. Because there are going to be other people here, other folks who are not in your immediate household. Granted, we're going to have some boundaries and some safety precautions set up, and we'll be encouraging people, wear your mask since you're out in public. But please do not come if you're one of the vulnerable populations. So if you are over 65, if you are asthmatic, if you have heart or lung issues or immunocompromised, please just don't come. Since we have most of your photos in our church directory, uh, we've actually thought through a way to get your Easter photo taken without you ever leaving home. So. Anyways, also please consider joining us for our virtual Easter breakfast. Vicar Matt and I will be on Zoom Easter morning from 9 to noon. You can find the link in your bulletin emailed to you or by contacting the church office. If you're unfamiliar with Zoom, Vicar Matt will be holding a tutorial the day before, so contact him if you'd like to join that. Before we begin our worship, we will be asking you to join in with a washing of hands as we did last year during our worship. So please take a moment before we begin to get anything that you would need for this. We want you to get a bowl, a glass or a pitcher of water and a hand towel for every person present. So now let us begin our Monday Thursday worship. Request that I forgot to add when we were filming the prayers in the sanctuary, but I want to make sure and get it in. Um, Alex Reimer, who is Jeff Reimer's son, today, Monday Thursday is actually his birthday, uh, but we'd like to continue to lift up Alex in prayers. Uh, many of you who are at Emmanuel this winter may remember that we were praying for him because he had some serious health complications that uh, resulted in pneumonia and some hospitalization. And so uh, he's doing better now, he is home, but just wanted to be sure that we lift up Alex and surround him in prayer. This evening, our Lenten observance comes to an end, and we gather with Christians around the world to celebrate the three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Tonight, the central focus is on his commandment, his mandate to love one another, Christ says, as I have loved you. The symbolic act of foot washing during Monday Thursday worship finds its origins literally from what Jesus did with his disciples. As a part of our worship service this evening, we'll include an ancient tradition made new, swapping the foot washing for hand washing. At its most basic, hand washing is for us what foot washing would have been for those in Jesus' day. They walked around barefoot or in sandals, worrying about their dirty feet in much the same way that we worry about germs on our hands today, especially during this time. As Jesus washed his disciples' feet, so we are called to give and receive love in humble service to one another. Now let us confess our sins before our Lord and Savior. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loved us. Write this commandment on our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Where true charity and love abide, God is dwelling there, God is dwelling there, who Thursday is from the book of Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 to 4 and 11 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The second lesson is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The gospel this morning is from John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, 
but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's interesting to me that I've celebrated Monday, Thursday and Holy Week twice this year. Once while I was on campus at Luther Seminary in January for our worship class, and now together with you digitally. What's more interesting to me is that although I've celebrated it twice, neither time has felt quite right. On campus, it didn't feel right because it was January, and now it doesn't quite feel right either. My Holy Week celebrations have been disrupted. I was excited to help plan Monday Thursday because that was a service I got to help plan while on campus at Luther Seminary. On campus, I was privileged to have a talented musician in our group who actually wrote a song for Monday Thursday. I was going to have our praise band play it for us. And as some of you know, I'm turning into a big fan of the Old Testament and I was going to discuss the celebration of Passover, the story of the Israelites being freed from Pharaoh and the Egyptians. By God is a fascinating story. It captivated me as a child, as an animated movie, Prince of Egypt came out when I was 11 years old. I think of all the things that the Israelites go through on this journey. God hears their cries because they are being oppressed by Pharaoh and God sends Moses and his brother Aaron. Good news, right? God sends the deliverer for them. But Pharaoh doesn't seem to see it this way and, does, and sees them as a nuisance rather than deliverers. One of the early interactions with Pharaoh and the deliverers is when Moses and Aaron ask Pharaoh for time off to worship Yahweh. Pharaoh not only says no, but he disrupts the Israelites' lives as slaves. He makes them work harder by not providing straw for them to use while making bricks. The Israelites are angry with Moses and God about this, and yet God is faithful. Eventually, God continues to disrupt not only their lives, but the Egyptian lives as well. God sends 10 plagues to provide Pharaoh a sign and a warning to let the Israelites go. However, Pharaoh declines each time. It's easy in hindsight to wonder why Pharaoh would not let them go. Doesn't he know what will happen? Think of the major disruption that happened to their lives when Pharaoh lets them go. The Israelites are their slaves. Who is going to do the hard, manual labor. Who is going to serve? So after the nine plagues, the Israelites are told 
to kill a lamb and roast it because one more plague is coming. They are to eat the lamb and put its blood on the doorposts of the house. This way, the Lord would know to pass over them. I think of the chaos and frantic experience we've had recently during our times. With the coronavirus, people are frantically buying up toilet paper, food, masks, cleaning supplies, water, and many other things. It's also a chaotic time as employers decide if they will stay open and how employees will work. I think of the same chaos as the Israelites are preparing for the Passover of the Lord. They are told to be prepared for a dangerous situation, have their sandals on their feet, staff in their hand, and to eat hurriedly. After the Lord passes over, all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, whether humans or animals, are struck down. The Israelites are finally freed from the oppression of Pharaoh with the Passover. Life will never be the same, either for the Israelites or Egyptians. God walks faithfully with the people. This is the celebration that Jesus and his disciples are celebrating together in our Monday Thursday Gospel text. We typically think of Monday Thursday with Jesus having the Last Supper. It is true, but I also think of why they are gathered together. There is something about being together for a meal. They are gathered together to celebrate the Passover feast. This is something like their Easter. It's to remember God's deliverance from oppression. Does that sound familiar? Yet during the celebration time, Jesus baffles the disciples. During their party, Jesus, the teacher, the Lord, humbles himself to do something that is seen as beneath him. He's doing something a servant would do. Jesus is disrupting the disciples' celebration with this. Jesus not only disrupts their celebration, but their lives as well. They will go from having Jesus with them to see their teacher, their Lord, executed on a cross. Jesus will die, and I think of the disruption that brings to their lives. The followers of Jesus will have their lives changed forever. I think of how the atmosphere would go from one of joy to bafflement to somberness. Jesus washes their feet. What is amazing to me, besides Jesus humbling himself to do this, is who he does it for. Earlier in the text for this gospel reading, it says that the devil is already in Judas's heart to betray Jesus. Nevertheless, Jesus washes Judas's feet. What about Peter? who asked so enthusiastically for Jesus to wash his whole body. Jesus knows that his hour has come and knows of Peter's impending denial. Nevertheless, Jesus washes Peter's feet. Jesus washes his betrayer's feet and his denier's feet. I think of the betrayal, frustration, anger, and hurt I would have with them. I may do the Midwest nice and pass it, be passive aggressive with them. Maybe spill some extra water on them or try to hurt a toe as I wash their feet. Or maybe I would confront them and scream at them. Yet, Jesus is disrupting earthly standards. Logic would tell us that he would not wash feet because he's the teacher. Logic would also tell us that you wash the feet of those whom you love and love you. Yet here Jesus, disrupting the way of the world and washing all of their feet. While Pastor Kate invites you to wash your own hands or the hands of those in your household, I would invite you to reflect on this. We cannot wash the feet or hands of others outside of our houses right now. And to be honest, if we ask someone before or after the coronavirus, they would probably look at us like we are crazy. But I invite you to think about how you can wash someone's hands or feet now. What is our contemporary equivalent to this? Not only after we are able to interact with each other again, but now too. 
I think of how we are physically isolating from each other. This is not a sacrificial love we are doing for ourselves. Rather, this is a sacrifice we are making out of abundance of love for our neighbor. How can we disrupt the way of the world? How can we disrupt the logic of the world to show this love? As a reminder of this, before you wash your hands or each other's hands, I would invite you to put red post-it notes or color paper red and put it over a doorpost or refrigerator as a reminder of God's faithfulness. A reminder that God hears our cries like God did for the Israelites. A reminder of God's disruptive love. Then I would invite you to wash hands and if possible, share a meal together. Or if you are in isolation alone, call someone during your next meal and talk with them while you virtually share a Passover meal. Reflect on how God has been at work in your lives. Reflect on what God might be up to in your life now and might be calling you to. Jesus tells us, he sets an example to us that we should do as he has done for us. Just as he has disrupted our lives with loves, let us too disrupt the way of the world with love. Amen. During our prayers, we will also be giving thanks for the offering that many of you continue to give to Emmanuel. We've received some questions about how to give your offerings during this time that we are not meeting in person. First off, you are welcome to put your offering into an envelope and mail it to the church, and we'll receive it like we normally do. We also invite you to consider online giving or text message giving, and that information can be found under the giving tab on our website. And now let us pray together. God of glory, receive these gifts and offers of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be, br may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, from death to life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of disruptions, thank you for being a God of unexpected surprises in the freeing of the Israelites, in Jesus' washing of his disciples' feet, and creating community in a time of distance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healer of our every ill, be with those in the service industry who continue to work during this time. Please watch over those who work at grocery stores, restaurants, fast food stops, post offices, garbage collectors. Thank you for their reminder of servanthood. We ask that you would protect them, dear Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And knowing that God hears us, we lift our prayers up to the Lord, both silently and aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I now invite you to get out the bowl and water and towels, one for everyone, that I encouraged you to get at the very beginning of service. And during this next hymn, I invite you to take time to slowly and thoughtfully wash your hands as a sign of the sacrificial love that we are doing at this time to keep our neighbors safe. And as a reminder of Christ's servanthood, if you have children with you, I invite you to have them be the ones who pour water over the adults' hands. As Christ disrupted the societal order of his time by washing his disciples' feet, may we be disrupted by a God of unexpected things.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved, and you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, not a human, scorned by others and despised by, by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like the potsherd, 
and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For the dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircle me. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dogs. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or arbor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nation shall worship before him. For the dominions belong to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in, the earth bow down, before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. And proclaim his deliverance to people yet unborn, saying that he has done it.